And now, because of all the uh, the other STEMI checks that we've been doing, you know, stimulus two, three, four, who knows if we'll get infinity, uh, retail spending has increased by 15% based on or using 2019 as a baseline. And why that's such a staggering number, you pointed out that usually retail sales go up by 3% per annum. So since we're now 15% higher, the Fed and the government has pulled five years of retail spending into the present. And so, I mean, that just takes me right back to the monetary heroin. But can you explain to people how that distorts the economy and why that's so yeah. bad? Because Keynesians would say, oh, that's great. We've just increased demand. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, any idiot can increase demand. I mean, in fact, demand is infinite when you think about it. I mean, everybody wants everything. You know, the limiting factor is supply. You know, supply is what creates real demand. Uh, right. But if you don't have supply, I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, the demand is meaningless because there's nothing to buy. Uh, and, you know, if you go back to 2008, when we had the financial crisis in summer of 2008, the trade deficit was at an all time record high. So mm -hmm. Americans were spending a lot of money. We were spending it on imports and we had a record trade deficit. When the financial crisis happened and Americans stopped spending or spent less, the trade deficit collapsed. I mean, it didn't go away. It's not like it turned into a surplus, but the draft, the deficits got much smaller. Um, and then for a while, even we started to have a surplus in energy. We started producing a lot of energy. And so we were no longer net importers of, of energy. We were net exporters for a while. But if you look at what's happening now, the trade deficits are higher now during the pandemic than they were before. I mean, we blew up into all time record high territory, right. the opposite monetary policy. You see, the correct response to the pandemic, assuming that, you know, the government did what it did, which I think was a mistake. And I think the only reason that the states were so quick to shut down their economies was because of the moral hazard in knowing the government was going to bail everybody out. The Fed was going to supply all the money. I think if the states knew that if they shut down their businesses and forced their people to, not to go to their jobs, that there was going to be no money coming from the federal government, if they knew that that was the consequence, they would have done a cost benefit analysis and decided, you know, it's not worth it. You yeah. know, we're not going to shut down the economy uh, and we would have been better off. Would we have had more COVID cases? Who knows? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but the real problem now is in COVID, it's the government's cure, which is uh, a, a far bigger deal. But the, the, the policy, the correct policy, when people are not working and they're not at, and they're not on their jobs, so they're not providing goods and services. Right. We need less money in the economy, not more. The money supply has to come down when people are providing fewer goods and services. Otherwise, prices are just gonna go up for those goods and services. But not only did the money supply not come down, it skyrocketed. And what happened was the government gave all those unemployed people who were no longer earning any money money but they didn't earn it right and when you earn money you earn money as a reward for helping to produce goods and right. supply services and because you help produce stuff now you get to consume some of the stuff you help produce but if you just sit at home on netflix producing nothing and then this check arrives in the mailbox and now you go out and spend it there you didn't help produce anything to, to, to buy, but now you're out there spending stuff. So we have all this money, additional money, but we have less stuff to buy with the money. I mean, this is a- But you know, the key is where's the stuff form. coming from? And you well, discuss this all the time. Well, yes, so how, it's coming from abroad. Right. Right, so we have record trade deficits. You've got uh, ships, you know, you know, backed up for miles and miles. Uh, in lines, you know, off the coasts, uh, you know, you got a shortage of containers to load stuff on. In fact, I remember I talked about my co on my uh, podcast that this year we set a record for the number of containers lost at sea because they have to pile them so high that sometimes en route they fall off the boat, and so they don't they don't make it across. Uh, but this is a massive economic imbalance, and you know, a lot of the stuff we're buying, you know, you got to wait three months, six months to get it delivered. 
Yeah. I mean, there's such a backlog of stuff that we're buying. In fact, one of the reasons probably that Americans still have so much stimulus money in the bank is because the stuff they want to buy isn't available. <laughs> so they're waiting for them to be able to do it. And of course, also, they still can't travel as much. They still got these COVID restrictions. But this money is burning a hole in their pockets. And meanwhile, too, you know, a lot of Americans uh, who don't have jobs but now earn more money not working, mm -hmm. a lot of these guys are not paying their rent. And they're not paying the interest on their student loans or the principal because the government declared a moratorium on all that. And so they've got money to spend on everything. And, you know, where are the landlords getting money if the tenants aren't paying rent? Well, a lot of cases, the government is providing the landlords with their money. Right. And what about lenders? If you made a student loan and the government guarantees that loan, and now the government says, hey, you student, you don't have to make your loan payments, the government has to make them because the government guaranteed them. Now, obviously, if it's a government loan, well, the government doesn't have to make the payments because the government was the lender. But now the government's not getting the money that it was supposed to get. So the deficits are skyrocketing, money printing. Uh, this is going off the charts. The question is, when are our trading partners going to really start jacking up their prices even more yeah, so Peter, than they I already want to, Before you go into that, I want to connect the dots real quick here. So when you're talking about all those goods coming in that we are consuming and we're not producing ourselves, I want to point out to people that, that if those goods are coming in from abroad, that means dollars. And I don't think they're going to be doing that. I mean, if you haven't been paying attention, there is a rotation that's in its infancy, but it's got a long way to go. And we're rotating out of big tech momentum into mm -hmm. real value dividend paying stocks and that doesn't favor the u.s market it was the growth stocks that didn't have income and didn't pay dividends that's what dominates the u.s market uh, so we have some value stocks but there are much better value stocks in europe in asia than there are in the united states but i also think the rotation is going to be out of u.s into foreign stocks out of developed markets into emerging markets and out of dollars into other currencies and commodities. So then when you have all these foreign exporters that are earning these dollars, they don't want to invest in US stocks and bonds. They want to get rid of those dollars to do something else. And so now they're going to start coming back and they're going to come back to buy stuff. Buy what? What are we making? Right? So, you know, they start buying used stuff. One of the things I think they're going to buy a lot of is our used cars. That's one of the reasons that the used car prices could go way up. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people in China may decide, you know, I've been riding my bicycle for a long time. I think I'll <laughs> buy a car. Hey, there's a lot of cars in America. Let me buy one of them. You're right. And as the dollar is plunging, those cars are getting really cheap for the Chinese if their currency is going up. Which is why I've been joking for a long time that we're going to send the Chinese uh, our cars and they're going to send us their bicycles. 